here are the drills that we're going to work with tomorrow night. Uh, it's our pretty much our first um, half ice practice uh, with that another team be or with another team being there. So we're going to break this down into some stations and work on some of the defensive and offensive things that the coaches saw from the Hershey tournament. Uh, so I want to uh, work you through these. But first, before that starts, I'm going to show you a full ice drill that we're going to do with the um, Phantom team at the time practice starts. We're going to have three lines of forwards. Let me fan back this up here. We're going to have three lines of forwards at each end of the ice. So we'll probably start with the Bantam team at this end, and all of our Pee Wees will be at this end. Um, and it's not just forwards. It's uh, forwards and D. All the players will be there. There will be pucks at both ends. This is a weave drill where you follow your pass. Uh, the big thing to remember is that uh, you follow your pass. Once you receive the puck, skate to the middle of the ice, and you'll catch on from here. As these players come down, you're going to see X2 make a pass to X1. At that point, he's going to follow the puck uh, where it came from, and X1 is going to cut towards the center of the ice. He's then going to headman the puck to X3. Same thing happens. X1 is going to follow his pass, and X3 is going to cut to center. He'll continue down. Try and get as many passes as you can in. This isn't a one or two pass drill. You try and get four or five in if you're able to. Once you get towards the other end of the ice, you're going to pass it to the next group of Bantams or next group of players that are in line and you're going to uh, turn and transition the other direction, and they're going to give the puck right back to you. So they'll pass the puck straight up to X1, and the drill will continue. Once they pass the puck, however, their next group of three is coming as well. So you will have some pressure coming in behind you. And this is a continuous drill. So as the O's come down the ice, once they reach our line, they're going to make a pass to the uh, group of uh, players that are standing there. You'll feed it back to them. They'll head this direction up the ice, and then a new group of three players from our line will take off as well. So that's going to be a full ice warm-up that we're going to do together with them. <clears throat> then we're going to break up into two uh, sets of stations. We will put the, um, the bumpers in between the uh, ice here and uh, break these into stations. But I'm just going to show you what this drill looks like with the, goalie, or with the defensemen and the goalies here. So basically we're going to set up and we're going to have our defensemen. And once again, like I said, the ice will be divided in half. But we'll have all the D in the corner here with two cones out. A defenseman's going to start skating backwards, and he's going to receive a pass from his partner in line. As soon as he gets that pass, he's going to round this uh, cone, which simulates taking three steps. He's going to put a quick shot on the net. As soon as he takes that shot, he's going to skate full speed as fast as he can forward, come around the cone again. He'll receive a second puck from his defensive partner. He will cross the cone, uh, take his three steps, and shoot again. These don't obviously have to be slap shots. They can be um, wrist shots um, for um, keeping the element of surprise near the other team. You'll come around the third cone one last time, and you're going to get the puck back. And this one's going to be a give and go with a partner that's going to be over in front of the net. So you'll make the uh, transition around the cone. You'll feed that player the puck, and then you can either drive the net for it with a stiff stick if you're a right-hander in this situation, or if you're a left, you would open up uh, indicating that you want a one-time pass from that, uh, from that player. That will be uh, that play. The person that shot will take this man's um, position. This defenseman will come over here in the corner, and then this D would be the next person to go and do the same drill um, that his buddy just did. That's one of the station drills um, for the defenseman. Uh, bear with me here as I pull up the other the other drills. Let's see, okay, creating offense. <clears throat> Uh, once we get the chance, uh, the, the defense will run through a few things. We'll separate some of the forwards and give them to you guys. And for this creating offense drill, uh, there'll be a net right here. And we might work this out of both sides. But basically, two D are going to start off at the point, And there's going to be a forward right here. Coach is going to be up here at the top with some pucks. Coach is going to dump the puck into the corner, at which point the forward is going to go down to retrieve it. As soon as he can turn and face the play, we want to pass the puck up to our defenseman as soon as possible. So if you were to take this little drill in the corner here and do it half ice and think of some of the experiences we had in Hershey this weekend where we held the puck a little bit too long because our points were open, um, we lost that element of the points being open because we did hold it too long and the opposing team adjusted and they covered. So what I want you guys to focus on here, and the coaches will help you, is when that puck is dumped in the corner, as you go in and get it and you take a picture to see what your options are, as soon as you can feed the puck up to the point, I want you to do that. The D are going to communicate with each other, and I want to see a D to D pass. At the same time, the forward is going to come and cut towards the net. As that forward cuts towards the net, at the same time, that defenseman's taking his three shots, and he's going to put a puck on for a quick deflection. Now, I know as you watch that drill, it looks like it's really, uh, it stutters, and there's three parts to it. But this should flow and take place in about four to five seconds. 
So what I'm looking to happen is, as these 2D go D to D, this forward's cutting across the slot, and almost as he's coming through the crease, this defenseman's taking a shot at the same time. So the puck and the forward arrive at the same time. So D1 and D2 are going to have to communicate and move the puck very, very quickly, and D2 is going to shift and force that, uh, force that puck on the net. And you can not get a quick rebound. Once again, that'll be working out of, a, out of the stations as well. Give me a second here as I adjust for the next drill. Okay, the forwards will be working on uh, this on one side of the ice while the D are working. What I want you to notice is uh, it's going to work our goalies, but it's also going to work on um, our forwards as far as shooting off our back foot and also cutting the seam. I had this drawn half ice, but again, we're going to work it into a smaller portion of the ice so we can do a couple things at once. Um, the goalie uh, is going to start this drill off on their stomach. Um, as soon as you hear the coach smack the ice, the goalie is going to jump up, and then the coach can pick any one of these players to pass to. In this instance, you're going to see him pass to the low forward, and the low forward is going to walk the goal line, and you can either try and stuff it on the short side or stuff it on the long side. As soon as you take your shot, you need to sprint back to the position in which you came from, and then the coach can pick another player as well. In this instance, you're going to see the coach pass out to this forward. I want to see the forward come down and cut across the seam, which is going to make the goalie transition and move. As soon as you cut across the seam, we're going to practice shooting off our back foot. Um, which is going to be a little bit different for some of you, but it's going to give you, uh, it's going to catch the the goalie off guard. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I show the uh, rest of the transition here, but the way we'll add the second part to this drill is you're going to see the coach pass the puck out to this forward. This forward's going to step out, and he's going to shoot a shot in such a way that if his if his uh, partner was driving the net, we're going to force a rebound off the goalie and force the goalie to put a a, a rebound out in a um, not so uh, is what I'm trying to say here. We're going to force the goalie to put a rebound out, out in the slot here. So if we have a partner driving the net on an outside drive, he can put that rebound in. And you guys will catch it before. It's actually one of the drills that Craig Lachlan ran um, last season. And it's a good way to get yourself to shoot um, in such opportunities where you're going to make opportunities for your teammates as well. So that will be running on one side of the ice. Uh, let me get to the next drill here. Okay. This is called Run Ragged, and this is one of the things that we saw definitely um, in Hershey. And once again, you hear, heard me talk about the Joe Sackick um, example where he had the puck on his stick for a minute 19 during an entire hockey game, which means he spent the other 19 minutes um, trying to get open. <clears throat> Anytime we're on offense, we always want to have at least two opportunities. I don't want to start this yet. We at least want to have two opportunities of, uh, of someone to pass to. So we're going to force ourselves to look and see where these options are. Okay, and obviously we've cut the ice again in half. You need to transition this into your brain and think of it as if you were working on this half um, sheet of ice. How can we always make sure we have two opportunities? So here's how we force it. And it's called run ragged. The reason it's called run ragged is both the forwards and the defensemen are going to have their hands full. It's a three on one. I'm looking for this defenseman to treat this as a penalty kill. That stick always on the ice, not turning our back to the players. Uh, always facing the play. We've got a goalie behind us here, as you can see, and uh, we want to keep that net side uh, defensive positioning, um, but using our stick to keep the play out. So let me run it here so you get an idea what I'm talking about. As you can see, X2 passed the puck down to X3. We want to make sure X3 has two options of who he can pass to every time. So if the puck comes down here and this player was to remain here, we only have one option because he can only pass the puck back. But to create that second option, you see X1 come down the line, and it creates two options, or an L. We make this pass over here. We want to give him, again, two options, so X2 is going to move over. As you can see, there's an option here, and there's an option across the uh, goal line. We pass the puck up to X2. X3 moves up, again, creating two passing options for player number two. I don't show D1 moving in the drill, but D1 is obviously playing this three-on-one aggressively. Uh, we're going to let it run for about 30 seconds. Um, after three or four passes, we'll let you get a shot on goal with D1 clearing out some rebounds. So that will be that drill. And it's an important concept in offensive support, making sure we have as many options as we can. Obviously, it doesn't even consider the fact you have point options. This is just the forwards uh, working with each other to create that offensive L. And give me a second here. I think there's only one or two more drills. 
The Mafia Breakdown, we'll go over this as a team. I know this is probably going to look really small on YouTube. Look at this into the ice. Um, this is the same thing, just broken down so we can run multiple stations. You heard me talk about uh, the Mafia before and what to do with the puck behind the net. Anytime you have the puck behind the net, the last thing we want to do as forwards is collapse in front of the net and, and uh, not create space. If I'm a defenseman on the other team and a forward crashes in front of me, I'm loving life because I can control the guy behind the net and where I want the puck to go, but I've also got dibs on this guy because he's standing right beside me. So you've heard me scream dots, and I've got the highlighted area here which emphasizes dots. So anytime the puck is behind the net, we want to have, like, the drill we just discussed, two passing options. So as you can see, I have a forward right here who's an outlet pass. But I also want to take this player right here, and we would move him into one of these scoring areas in the dots. If you do that, you create havoc for these two defensemen because, obviously, if they leave the space in front of the net to come out and address you, then that allows this forward to wrap the puck around and get a shot on net. These two forward defensemen must respect the play behind the net, so this is no man's land. And I used my cell phone during the Hershey game to kind of record you guys in offense. And when you would come uh, to the bench, I would show you how this was always open ice right here because the defensemen were playing down low. Um, so what we're going to do is going to divide the ice here, and we're going to work the same thing. Two defensemen, we'll have two forwards, and I'm going to give you guys five pucks behind the net. Uh, defensemen are allowed, not allowed to go behind the net, and this forward is not allowed to wrap the puck around. Uh, he must look for the dots plays and make uh, five consecutive passes to uh, these players for shots on net. Defensemen, we will go over how to protect behind the net. At the same time, if a pa pass is made out to the dots, how to get in the lanes to block those shots as well. And I'm, that may be the last one. I don't think I drew one here. I do have a small game that we will do that will emphasize headmaning the puck and creating quick three-on-two rushes. Um, it's the, this drill right here. It's not the one on the right. Um, if we can get to that on the end. And then the coaches again spoke. Um, actually, this defensive coverage uh, drill you watched last week. We just did not get to that in practice, but we will work on that again so we can do our box plus one in the defensive zone. Uh, the coaches did discuss our um, conditioning as far as stops and starts, um, playing three periods of hockey at double A level. As you can see, that Hershey team was pretty well conditioned and moved the puck very quickly. Um, so we've got some um, change of direction, quick speed agility drills that we're going to do as well. That pretty much covers it. Um, if you have any questions, shoot me a text. Otherwise, we'll go over it a little bit in the locker room and then uh, hit the ice.